some of you might remember a few years back in the Padmanabha Swami temple in Tiruvananthapuram uh, when they opened a few chambers not even all of them just, just opened one and there were trillions worth of gold in fact in fact I mean the newspapers say trillions and and one followed by several several zeros but honestly nobody can put a price on them that's the amount of gold that was found there and in fact the main deity itself was seen as sculpted out of solid gold and that's not the only deity uh, in Tirupati there is a silver image that was given by a Pallava queen called Same, which is still in worship today. Uh, the Argar Kovil has a solid gold deity who unfortunately is never shown to the pilgrims. So many temples like this have solid gold vessels, solid gold deities. And all of these point how to how temples are vast repositories of some fabulous jewels and silver and metalware in general. I am Pradeep Chakravarti. Let me tell you a little bit more about this and why gold jewellery and silver is important in temples. When gold and silver were seen as the most important forms of wealth in those days after land, uh, temples or at least the wealthy temples tended to store their assets in this form. Kings and nobles and even ordinary people in the village would donate gifts of gold and silver to the temples. Now this gold and silver would be the surety of the temple to ensure that in times of distress, which normally meant times when agricultural production was low, there was a drought, there was a flood, there wasn't enough money. That was the time the temple would use this gold and silver to sell, get income and continue its pujas and continue feeding the people. Uh, some of the most beautiful pieces of jewellery are pieces that are actually worn on the deity and some of them even on the back of the deity. So when you go to a South Indian temple, especially the famous ones like Shirangam or Argar Kovil, uh, not only should you see the front, you should see the back as well because in the long hair, there will be beautiful padakams or pendants that would be embroidered into the hair and used. Uh, temples also functioned as banks in those days. So when traders or farmers needed money, they would go to temples and they would take loans. And, at, and to show that the temple was wealthy and it was, it was able to give loans, a lot, of this jewelry, uh, a lot of this jewelry would be worn by the deity on procession as the deity is taken around the four or the eight important streets. So people could actually see how wealthy the temple was. Uh, apart from the golden jewellery, many temples even today, the ones in Kumbakonam are particularly famous. The Nelliapa temple or the Nanganeri temple are particularly important, have beautiful vahanas or wooden mounts uh, which are covered with sheets of very finely worked gold or silver uh, and uh, these are taken out in procession even today. One of the most enchanting festivals is the Aragar Koil festival where Aragar comes to attend the wedding of his sister Meenakshi. Uh, sometime in summer, it's really hot, uh, but then this is a time of great celebration and he comes all the way to the Vaigai River and then he finds that Meenakshi has already got married and he goes back and he comes on a golden horse and uh, in the Aragar temple, like in Sri Rangam, he is always protected by a golden umbrella as well. So these are some of the important jewellery that we have in the temple. Next time you go to a temple, have a closer look at the jewellery, have a closer look at the silver and you will see some things that are really, really pretty.